I'm sick of more Omega. Today I'm going to talk about my opinions on the Anvil Terrapin now that I've had a good amount of time testing it ahead of 3.1. When I did a first impressions video, I said I wasn't going to do a review until the full 3.1 release, but I think that most of the things that I have to say are things that are a little baked into the design of the Terrapin unless some major changes are made in the future. Like I said before, when I first got into the Terrapin for the first time, I was surprised by a few things about the size and some of the performance of the ship. As 3.1 has taken shape in the PTU phase, a lot of the bugs I encountered in the Terrapin have been taken care of, and the ship is pretty stable right now. Other than the thruster animations being a little odd right now, and inconsistent animation activation with some engines. These animation issues are pretty common right now, as there are a lot of ships, including the Constellation line, that have similar problems. When the Terrapin was first announced, I was pretty excited about the concept, and the armored, durable exploration role of the ship that it could take. I didn't think the ship would be better than any ship like the Aquila, but it was an interesting lower cost option. Most of all, I liked the overall design, especially the side mounted engine pods. So going into using the Terrapin, I was extremely interested. The more I used the Terrapin though, the more there were little things that bothered me. Not because of its purpose in the verse, but choices the designers made along the way. First, the lighting and layout of the ship. This is minor, but it's something I noticed every time when entering the ship. The scanning station is just oddly positioned and installed. I don't get why it's in the center of the room. I see that they're trying to make a physical attachment to the AWAC-like scanner on the top of the ship but it just doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. Why does it actually need to be attached to the dish? As the release of the Terrapin got closer, we got to see a lot of previews from CIG regarding lighting and the harsh armored interior, which I thought looked really good. I still like the overall look of it, but that chair and the lighting associated with it started bugging me. Every time I opened the side ramp and looked up, all I could think is that the chair looks like some sort of Darth Vader torture chair with an ominous red light overhead. <laughs> if the chair was an external turret or seemed to have some functional reason to be physically attached to the dish, I would get it, but there's no apparent limitation other than it looks cool. It just seems inefficient in a small space. There's enough room there that there could have been more crew stations able to scan multiple spectrums or other things rather than one chair. The Terrapin is set up to be a ship that can take hits, and it's obviously designed to be purposed to be entering atmosphere and with landing on planets in mind. The large rotating engine pods just scream land on planets and look cool doing it. Now here's my biggest problem with the Terrapin, the pilot position and cockpit configuration. I said in my first impressions video that the Terrapin has a very low position in relation to the center of the flight path in the HUD. When flying to planet surfaces and landing, this pilot position is terrible. The pilot's view of the surface immediately ahead is almost completely obscured by the control panel and screens. Finding a suitable landing spot is very difficult from the pilot seat, and using an external view is almost required. If you do land from the pilot seat, it's almost completely luck that you selected a good spot. On the sides of the pilot, there are large structural panels that almost completely cover the pilot's vision side to side. This requires the pilot to physically turn the ship to view anything, or again, go to an external view which loses the HUD information, further reducing the pilot's situational awareness. Adding to the poor pilot positioning is the armored panel that covers the pilot canopy when the gear is raised. I get that the Terrapin is meant to be an armored little tank of a ship, but I don't think such a panel really assists the pilot and creates a blind spot added to the sides and large instrument panel taking up a good portion of the forward vision. I would prefer to see this cover as a pilot controlled independent function, maybe to cover all the windshield panels and a function like one-way glass like the Prowler. It would be a function that would further separate it from other ships and add to a cool factor. Or maybe have some sort of digital display for when the shutters are shut. I think that one way CIG could easily improve this pilot perspective issue is to improve the track IR functions to allow the pilot to lean over the panel. 
Here, I'll run some footage of me using Lockheed's prepared to show you what I mean about this function. Obviously, this would exist in a VR environment, but if this was included with Track IR, it would help a lot right now. I think improving this function would help not only the Terrapin, but all ships, really. I said in my first impressions video that I thought the Terrapin had a little too good fuel economy than I thought it should. I get that the Terrapin is an exploration ship and should be a bit of a flying fuel tank for extended range, but I think that because the ship has eight large engines that are used for lift and atmosphere as there are no wing surfaces, it seems to me that paired with good maneuverability, there should be a trade-off. I could see long-range quantum fuel tanks, but for regular flight, I just think it's a little unbalanced. CIG talked up that the ship has good maneuverability because of these large engines, and those large engines should use fuel when holding the ship up in atmosphere, or else why have them rotate? Okay, now that I've gotten through a lot of the bad, let's talk about the good. The Terrapin has very good maneuverability. Not even considering its weight and size, it's just plain good especially when maintaining your forward speed, and this is important considering that the acceleration time for this ship, which isn't as good. But the maneuvering with forward speed really impressed me, these numbers are better than a saber. This was done last night in the PTU, so these probably are the easiest thing for CIG to change, but as time goes on, I'll return to the Terrapin to see if anything changes. So I split things up like I've done before with minimum half and maximum effort when testing yaw and pitch axes. Also, I refined the way I test to get more accurate numbers, and we'll be using these new procedures to get performance numbers from now on. So look for improved testing when I revisit ships and updates. Alright, taking a look at the pitch axis first. The Terrapin at minimum effort is able to turn at 11.5 degrees a second, and has a turn radius of just over a kilometer. At half effort, we're able to turn at 25.7 degrees a second, and with a turn radius of 235 meters. At max effort, the Terrapin turns at 75 degrees a second and has a turn radius of 27.5 meters. To put those turn radius numbers in perspective, the minimum effort numbers are almost 40% better than the Saber on the same axis, and the rate of the turn is almost 26% better at minimum effort. And at half effort radius is still 40% better, and the rate is 28% better than the Saber. At maximum effort, the Saber is much better, but these intermediate turns so far really impress. Next, the yaw axis continues to bring great performance. At minimum effort, the Terrapin is able to pitch at 15.4 degrees a second and has a radius of 781 meters. Half effort delivers a turn radius of 196 meters and a rate of 30.7 degrees a second. At maximum effort, we turn at 70 degrees a second and have a radius of 35 meters. Again, these numbers are very impressive when maintaining forward speed. This is the first ship I've tested, which was able to complete a minimum effort turn with a radius under a kilometer. I wasn't expecting that from the Terrapin. Now for the acceleration and deceleration data. The Terrapin gets moving pretty good in cruise, it just takes a little bit to get there. Zero to a top speed of 1,205 meters per second takes just over 35 seconds and requires 21.3 kilometers. Going from cruise to zero takes just under 16 seconds and requires 9.6 kilometers. This means that while the Terrapin can outrun larger ships, it will be under fire while it does. Though those maneuvering numbers may help the Terrapin if you decide to fight, but losing forward speed may mean more time fighters have firing opportunities on you if you decide to flee. Accelerating to SCM is pretty average, going from 0 to 210 in just a little over 3 seconds, and needing 343 meters, and stopping will take just a bit more time, and space needing 360 meters. So while I take issue with some design choices that affect the functionality of the Terrapin, it really redeems itself with some excellent performance numbers. As far as exploration ships go, the Terrapin is a standout performer. I was comparing this to the Sabre, but think about the comparison to the next ship up from the Terrapin in exploration, the Aquila, from a maneuvering standpoint, it's not even a contest. I just really want to see what additional functionality CIG brings to the scanning station. In other ships, I have a pretty clear idea of how each station will work. With the Terrapin, I wonder why certain design choices were made, and makes me wonder what they're planning for it. Though, like I said, I hope some of the visibility issues get taken care of with further development of track IR integration or VR in the extended future. 
Overall, the Terrapin is interesting but frustrating at the same time. So what do you think? Do you agree that Darth Vader is here to explore torture in the Terrapin? Or will you be loving your space turtle to new worlds? As always, leave it in the comments, and remember to hit subscribe. I'm Sycamore Omega, and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching today's video. Are you new to Star Citizen and are looking to get into the verse? Use the code above to get an extra 5,000 UEC added to your account when you sign up. See you again soon!